Ladies and gentlemen, nerds, nerds and neckbeards. neckbeards. Welcome to a beautiful episode. A season two episode. Oh my God. <gasps> so, uh, of. Oh, that's a good point. Westworld, Westworld Whateverly. 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 Tana. Yes, um, Dave. We got two emails <gasps> from two different people. I love our fans. Asking us when the fuck we were going <laughs> to record about it's season in two. In the name, David. Uh, Whateverly. We record whateverly. <laughs> uh, oh my god. But really, we just got to get our heads out of our ass and do this recording more often. Yes, absolutely. We're back on schedule. We're back. Well, kind of. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. We're we getting, don't actually have a schedule, which true. is why we're always on schedule, which is <laughs> the best right. part about not having a schedule. Cheers to that. What are we drinking tonight, what are we drinking my friend? Tonight? Well, we are drinking. Well, you came up with this idea, and it's a very good idea. So, you know, I've been thinking since uh, Westworld likes to fuck with us. Yes, right? they do. And they love this idea of a good and evil, yep. bicameral mind. You got yep. two pieces, yep. day and night, dar- dark and light. Mm-hmm. I figured we should play into that with day and night. And so this episode is called Journey into day Night. Day and Night. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. I'm not going to rap. I thought you were going to rap. I was getting excited. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a good... I'm not. Uh, I'm too uh, white. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, very white. White kids talking about Westworld today. <laughs> We're going to sing about it all night and day. <laughs> the episode is called Journey Into Night, so we drink in daytime drinks called Tequila Sunrise. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah. And this is the part where we drop the mic. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drop these mics, though. They're kind of expensive. <laughs> Please. Um, hand me that spoon. I can't wait. So we've got Tequila Sunrises, and they're beautiful. We've got uh, our tequila... Uh, and yep. orange juice. And what type of tequila is this? This is Costco brand Kirkland. tequila. Kirkland, Kirkland, te- Kirkland tequila. Kirkland By the way, tequila. Um, I, I just have to make this known. Uh, yes. Whenever Tana brings an alcohol to my house, <laughs> she doesn't bring the bottle. She doesn't bring like no. half a bottle. Well, or we buy like that. things in bulk. You have to understand, listeners, that as a person that enjoys alcohol, I buy things in bulk. And so I have handles of alcohol in my house. And I'm not going to drive over to your house with like an open handle of whiskey or an open handle of vodka or, in tonight's case, tequila. <laughs> so instead, she fills up these little tiny, tiny like, little like the, water the baby bottles, water little baby bottles. water bottles, yeah, like a six ounce or uh, eight ouncer, <laughs> and fills them up with some alcohol and brings it over in that, <laughs> and then writes on it. Mm-hmm. And so in my liquor cabinet, a lot of liquors. To in, to be fair, you don't want to reach for a mini bottle of water. And have it be vodka oh, at 8 in the morning or tequila, right? That's a valid point. You don't want to mix them up. And Good thing I don't get my water out of my <laughs> liquor cabinet. You don't want to go for a hike and then <laughs> all you have when you're parched is very boilingly hot tequila, right? This is, this is d- a, it's a public service. I'm these doing. are valid concerns. Yep. No, but so my liquor cabinet, or at least the pantry and on the <laughs> shelf where I keep all my liquor, is modest. It is a modest, is a modest cabinet. cabinet. <laughs> uh, is full of these little water bottles <laughs> with things written on Which them. I had completely forgotten about until I brought one over tonight, mm-hmm. and you were like, "Holy shit, I have one already." That says tequila on it. <laughs> that we so, hadn't finished from some other finished. episode. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> cheers. Uh, cheers. This drink looks like nothing, nothing to, to me. me. Mm. So, season two. Ooh, that's tequila. <laughs> Is it? Ooh, that's very tequila. <laughs> Tana! Oh, well, you know, where have you got to go? Nowhere. Yeah, just, that's true. I'm not going anywhere. Just playing video games. That's what you do. That's what I do. Uh, journey into night. Journey into night. Journey! Whoa! Whoa! The feeling is strong. Uh, we open with Arnold and Dolores talking Arnold. about dreams. Is it Arnold or is it Bernard? It's got to be Arnold. I don't know. Son of a bitch, it's Arnold. Look, oh shit, it say, could be Bernard. I'm going to say God this. God damn it, David. I'm going to say this. <laughs> During damn our walkthrough, through, you were like, oh man, God she's talking it. to Bernard. No. And I was like, it could be Arnold. And you're like, no. God damn it. You know what? Was. I'm putting a pin so. in this. I'm actually drawing a pin on my notes because holy shit, it could fucking be Bernard. It could this, be Bernard. There's like a two week window, right? So at the end of the episode, yes. we've watched all of episode one. You've watched, yes. listener, have watched all of episode one. Hopefully. So we've got... Break it down for me. There's a two-week window here. Yeah, so basically, just to summarize that, uh, they're playing again with this two different timeline aspect that we see. But this time, instead of 30-year gap, it's about a two-week window. So we see Bernard. um, He gets washed up. Uh, The first time we see him, uh, he's in the party. You know, we're seeing that night again. He's... Mm -hmm. 
He's the gala night. standing next to a couple hosts. You yep. see some people shooting at Simon. Or yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. what his actual name is, but again, we call him Simon. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, Simon. Uh, from The Simon. Walking Dead. Yeah. Handlebar, um, but handlebar, handlebar guy, mustache. yeah. So um, people are shooting things off of his head. He's just standing there, blah, blah, blah. And then you see Dolores you know, kill Ford again. Yeah. It's a big flashback. And then you see, later on in the episode, you see Ford again waking up. Yeah. Uh, not Ford. Bernard waking up on a beach. Yeah. And he's being awoken to G.I. Joe uh, rescuing him from some girl who's about to kill him. Right. Is this... Um, so, but the, the... In the broad scheme of things, right? Like we... Yeah, and You and I agree that there's... And this is... Our memory is going to be continually faulty. There's been two weeks, right? Like yeah, there's, they say there's that. some sort of... Yeah. Two week thing hellscape that's happened, and when Bernard uh, wakes up in the second scene here of the first episode, it's the two weeks later mark. In on when he wakes up on the beach, that's yes, our that's, current time. That's when GI Joe is like, "You're going to shoot the boss." Yeah, and then she goes through her cards yep. and finds the high priority. And, okay, well, yeah. all right, well, let's start at the beginning because if if this is Bernard talking to Dolores, yeah. Okay, so as he says, it's, I thought, Arnold and Dolores. I dreamt that I was on an ocean. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I was spacing out. I was drifting. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of a dream. I dreamt I was on an ocean with you and the others were on a, dis- and you and the others were on a distant shore. And the waters were rising around me. Yeah, you were right? with us, says Dolores. No, you'd left me behind and the waters were rising around me. Yeah, so something interesting about yep. this. Tell me. Right? Um, we this is the this is the first time we hear I think Bernard mention dream right, yeah. right now, and we know from from previous episodes that Dolores references her memories yep. as dreams. Yep. So this immediate immediately to me said, "Hey, uh, Bernard oh, is remembering. Bernard is not dreaming. Bernard." But if it's is Arnold, remembering. no, 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 no. Oh. So okay, all right, okay, Let me all right, okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> Just okay. a second. Oh god, my phone. <laughs> One uh, take wonders strike one take again. Wonders. <laughs> if Put it's that shit on silent, uh, how dare you spam caller? Yes, actually, it was probably uh, FPL. <laughs> Listen, anyway, mom, uh, <laughs> I can't talk right now. I'm mom. podcasting with my, my friend. My <laughs> <I have> friends. <laughs> um, so um, there's the great scene at the end yeah. of this episode mm-hmm. where, or close to the end of the episode, where Bernard um, <sighs> is leading GI Joe. And uh, whatever his buddy, Tall Baldy. Yeah, we need to, to come up with a name for him. Um, the Sadistic String Bean. String Bean, yes. Um, is leading Sadistic String Bean. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, I don't know if I'm going to be able to say that in this whole episode. Is leading the Sadistic String Bean yep. um, to a valley. Yeah. Right? Uh, the Western Valley or something yeah. along those lines. Um, and when they get there, they're surprised because there's an ocean there. There's water. Yeah, it's the final scene. But... There wasn't water there before. That's the key there is that this was a valley. And so we know Ford has terraforming equipment, right? Yep. He's, he's changed landscapes yep. before. But um, but you would assume that if Ford had done it before his death, Some, G.I. Joe and Sadistic String Bean right, would know about they it, right? They would know. Uh, and therefore, we think, at least I think, that this is the waters that are rising Around the him. dream, so they're this bracketing. Is the dream. So they're well, giving us I don't an know episode if this where it's the is first the dream, but the, the dream occurred yep. there. That's what oh. I think. Oh, oh, so you're saying it's a memory of something that happened there that yes. he's that he's 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 like recounting because in that scene where he leads String Bean there, yeah. they say what happened and he says he I, says I killed them. Yeah, he goes I uh, them all. So they go, you know, let's go see for ourselves. The satellites in the very last scene finally come back online. Yeah. Uh, and G.I. Joe and String Bean and Bernard are all walking through that carnage of the gala. They find Ford's maggoty eye corpse. They find a tiger. What the fuck? Yeah. And it's well, like, say- oh, hi, Susie. <laughs> Susie just started trying to uh, bat at me. Yeah. It's the first time she's interacted with me in months. Hi, Susie Q. Maybe she thinks you're Lauren because Lauren's on training. So she's like, you're sitting Aww, in that seat. You must, be my new mo- you must be my new mommy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no way that Ford. So G.I. Joe says, no way that Ford made this without our knowing. Right. So where did it come from? And Bernard says, I don't know. Uh, and then he said, I, uh, you know, String Bean might say something. We see all the hosts laying face up in the water, face down in the water. They all look down. And he said, I killed them. All of them. And right. then it ends on Teddy being underwater. So they open well, with a Teddy? dream. It was Teddy. You sure about that? I, I am sure about that. Okay. It was James Marsden. I don't know if they've got him playing somebody other than Teddy. 
Um, yeah, so he that they bracket the. Thing. I wasn't sure if it was Teddy or not, but yes, yeah, so, okay. I mean, it's I I he was underwater, and I've been wrong about uh, other things than that, but I do believe it was Teddy. I dreamt I was on an ocean with you, and the others, and you and the others were on a distant shore. Mm-hmm. You were with us, says Dolores, in that like s- sweet girl next door vibe. Yeah, this yeah. is why it seems like it was so long ago because now she's all like Rambo style, and she's not Dolores blue dress. And Arnold. Yeah, well, we find out that she's got kind of two personalities going, yeah. actually three, because she makes a statement in this episode like, um, uh, I, you know, I see the good in this world, I see the compassion, but yeah. I also see the the danger or the the, yeah. the wrath or something, and that's that's the, the Wyatt, Wyatt part yep. of me. And then she says, "But I choose to make my own decisions." I'm trying now. to listen to my own voice. Right. Uh, so the the no, you'd left me behind, and the waters were rising around me. Dolores says, "What's it mean? Dreams don't mean anything, Dolores. They're not real. What is real?" And he thinks about it, and do you know what he says? Oh, he goes something tangible, right? Or he says that which is irreplaceable. Irreplaceable, yeah, that's what it is. But that answer doesn't seem to satisfy you, because it's not. What does she say? It's not completely honest. And then I think it's Arnold, but maybe it's Bernard. Arnold Bernard says, you frighten me, Dolores. You're growing, learning so quickly. I'm scared of what you can become. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And it, and then that's when that's we start. Bernard, so that's man. the that's, opening. That's a hundred percent Bernard. That's before we even have credits. I'm saying Arnold, I, but if that's Bernard, man, ten points to Gryffindor. Slytherin. Slytherin. Damn right. it! Come on now. All right. I All right. Play no goodie ten points. Shoes. Slytherin Jeez. is on the line here. Weigh in, uh, listeners. Email us if you think this is Bernard or Arnold or future or past. It's Bernard. <laughs> let's be honest. All right. Call it text this number to vote for your favorite candidate. <laughs> I wish we had a text number. Mm. That'd be kind of cool. I should look into that. Not we that once anyone's did a Twitter poll text- that got one vote. Ten votes. One vote. I, yeah, it's a it good was point. bad. It didn't get any votes. <laughs> People uh, don't do you, actually like us. The, just, the, the, well, we have at least two fans because we, we have, have at two least emails, two fans. That's and right. they were great emails. And Thank so you very yeah, much for those. They emails, make our day. By the way. Yes. Um, okay, so uh, because it's not completely honest, you frighten me, Dolores. You're growing, learning so quickly, and this all happens. This exposition, yeah. all happens before the opening credits, the new opening credits of the show. Yeah, where there's like a mother a and a baby, a Maeve. fucking That's buffalo. Totally Maeve. Right, like we've got there's there's this whole new beautiful. They keep all the piano playing music mm-hmm. and the sort of like machinery vibe. Yep. Uh, but they've got it's new, it's beautiful, it's creepy. And this scene with is it Arnold and Dolores happens before the credits. Um, it's Bernard. There are quick flashes of the season to come. So Bernard says, or Arnold says, you scare me, Dolores, of what you might be. I'll be I'm afraid of what you might become. Do you remember what the flashes are? I wrote them down because I think that they're going to be important to talk about. Okay. See what you can remember. Let's see if you can flash me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's flash Dave. <laughs> the first one is... Bern- I'm down for that. <laughs> the first one is when Bernard is in freakout mode, when he forced Ford to unlock him in the last episode. Mm. Uh, or, you know, the bicameral mind. Yep, yep, yep. He's got Clem is holding him. And so it's a very low angle. We're looking up into the face of Bernard and he's kind of like twitching and send me back in. That's the first one. The second one is Bernie watching Ford saying I uh, at the gala saying, so I do so hope you will enjoy this last piece very much. And then Dolores puts Shooting the him. gun behind yep. his head and you silently see, you know, her pull the trigger in the flash. That's the second flash. The third flash is Arnold walking Dolores through his city garden house at night in that skimpy black dress, which we'll see in the next episode. So the, as far as I've seen, we've got three episodes that exist in the world right now. I've only seen the first two. Yep. But I know that this third flash is from a future episode. So I think, you know, we're going to, they're flashes that will be from all the episodes, right? So this will give us a little clue of what's coming. Uh, the fourth one is Bernard in later in this episode in the stables, shaking and kind of having his glitch out that's the right. night of the gala. Yep, yep. When the when CEO the sta- lady. When the st- that's when he realizes that uh, the, he's got to pretend to be a human yeah. because the humans are not going to care if you're a robot or not. They kill that stable boy. Yeah. yeah they beat the shit out of him. Yep. Uh, the and Bernard f- stops, tries to stop them. He yep. says, this guy, he's, he's good. He's fine. Yep. Uh, Abernathy, we flash very quickly the next two. 
go by the fastest of the entire set. And it's Abernathy, who we know has all of that information in him that we haven't seen yet. Right. Like he was uploaded when he was naked and in the warehouse. And now there's a flash of him in a white button up uh, kind of glitching, looking like he's freaking out or glitching or downloading or something. Yeah. Shaking. And then very quickly after that, a skull flashes. Uh, Is it a host skull? Is it a human skull? Is it a, you know, um, alas, poor Yorick skull? Uh, The seventh one is Dolores. To Uh, be (laughs) or to not to be. (laughs) Or to not to be. (laughs) To not to be. A host. Uh, Shakespeare. (laughs) Uh, The seventh one is Dolores touching Bernard's face and saying, there is beauty in what we are. Uh, Bernard, this one's interesting. Bernard firing a gun, the explosions, ba 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 ba, are lighting up his face. So you can see the gun that he's firing, but you can't see what he's shooting. Maybe he's shooting all the hosts, and then the water rises yeah, above him. Yeah, maybe. And then the way they've cut it though is Bernard immediately. So you see the gun, ba ba ba, and it's all black behind him. So there's no contextual clues there. Mm-hmm. But then it flips around the camera. And we're in the red flashing control room and it's silent. We're on Bernard who's sitting with both of his hands. He's not holding a gun. Both of his hands are like up near his face. Um, He's about to put his head down into his hands. His hands might be shaking and there's people being shot and like a body gets grabbed and dragged and it's all you don't hear any of the gunshots. We know that that this massacre happens in the control room because we've been there. Yeah. Or at least we go there with Brit Pop and Maeve. Yep. And so someone is starts dragging a body that's kicking in the control room. Is it Hector? Is Hector dragging a body? Maybe we can't tell. You can't see anything except for Bernard clearly in that scene. Oh no, it wouldn't be Hector. Hector. Uh, And then we cut to the glasses washing up on the sand And now the episode, you know, the credits are done and the episode truly begins. Um, And it's Bernie, the wine glass. Two weeks later. Yep. The sand, an angry lady with a giant gun is, you know, saying, who the fuck is that? Yeah. You know, and G.I. Joe comes up and he's like, oh, you're going to. You're going to shoot the boss? Yeah. We've got cool ATVs in the scene. Yeah. We've got cards that have faces on them, high priority cards that have. And we know they're, we think they're, we know they're of humans because we see um, CEO A couple of those other faces. Yeah. Yeah, CEO ladies in there. And then in the episode, a couple of the other like humans. Right. From the gala, we're also being shuffled right. in that deck before we get to Bernard. So that's yep. the you know human targets. There's a lot of cool ATVs. There's some sort of like military boat. They're landing on the sand. They're setting up a base camp. There's yeah. tents. It's a mobile command center. They're talking to the Chinese Navy. Yeah, which, which is interesting because that clue right there and and even um yeah. uh, sadistic string bean says yeah. something like um sadistic your your bean. government gave us control of this mm-hmm. island or whatever you have no jurisdiction mm-hmm. here so what he that tells to, him to me get the fuck out right what well he tell, yeah it tells him to get the fuck out yeah but what it what that says to me is that uh westworld yep is a real place yeah it's on earth yeah right it's an island probably close to china right right and so there's you know it it Makes me ask questions like, what do they do about actual like snakes and invasive species and flies? And like, you right. know, there's the whole thing about flies being on the island. If it's an actual open air island, you would have flies and shit there. Maybe, maybe they have some sort of futuristic yeah. control, right? Yeah, because I mean- they have to keep. And okay, so we're getting ahead of ourselves. Um, they do talk about other parks. So in this scene, we learn a ton that we didn't know about. Yeah, we know there's one. a, oh, well, maybe not in that scene, but in this episode, we know yep. there's at least six parks. Yep. Thank six you. parks. Park six, uh, Bengal tiger yeah, that washes up on shore. Yeah, the tiger. Uh, they, we've never had a stray go between parks Park before, before is what they right? say. Yep. Uh, and the tech guy, did you notice this, Dave? Uh, the tech guy scalps, a ghost nation dude, yep. which come on, rips you're out gonna, his egg, his you're egg gonna, head. You're gonna, oh, oh, I see what you did there. See what I did there. They scalp a Native American. Come on, I, know, right? I mean, it's a little on the nose here. Oh, um, it's. But when he looks at the top of the head, he's amazed, and he goes, "I don't know what this is about." Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I, he doesn't recognize it. He doesn't yeah. know what the fuck that is. Oh man! And so he gets the brain, and we have that new like 
plug the brain into the flat, you know, yeah. your little the tablet, the tablet, and download the, what the they egg. see. I'm calling the that egg. the egg. Their egg head. It's, it's their it's egg head. head. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's their egg head. Poor Bernard. He, you know, he's got to be thinking about his own egg head. I know, right? Oh, uh, and he's got his egg head fluid. The yolk is just slipping out of his ear too fast. Oh my god. Poor, poor Bernard. Poor Bernard. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, it's funny because he is an egg head too, because he's oh, like the, nerdy. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tech guy says they can't just change their character profiles. Who is this? We see the video. It's Dolores killing this ghost nation guy. Yeah. And he's like, isn't that the rancher's? And he, uh, Bernard's like, oh, that's the rancher's that's Dolores, daughter. The, Dolores, the rancher's daughter. And she goes, isn't he, she like the welcome wagon yeah. for new hosts? Yep. And, uh, and they can't just change their character profiles. We flash back to the party. Gunshots. The hosts have gone wild. The CEO lady finds Bernard in the stable. They're hiding in the stable. She says, "Hey, we got to get the fuck out of here." Everyone's yep. like, "Well, where's the clo- you work here? Where's the closest outpost?" They're like, yeah. "Oh, it's this way." And CEO lady goes, "No, Delos has a secret one closer. It's over they, here." No, first she doesn't. She doesn't spill the beans yet. And this was such a. I think this was the best twist for me. Uh, it points the the whole. I think season is going to be about a deeper game. Yes. And in the first season. You remember that conversation that Brit Pop and uh, Catherine Teresa had on the deck, like looking out over Westworld. Yes. And she said there are three games, right? There's the guests version, there's management's version, and then there's the people that own it. There's right. the shareholder, the and the shareholders are playing a completely different game. Right. Uh, I think we see the first two in season one, and we're seeing the shareholders game now, but yeah. not even all the shareholders, the CEOs didn't most of them didn't have a fucking clue right um so yeah ceo well, lady there's only one ceo yep. the, this is the scene where they murder that stable boy just because they can and then the uh bernard notices that he's leaking brain, brain fluid um a piano starts playing the new day opens boom 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 and do you notice boom, 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 the symbolism boom, in this scene boom, 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 boom. The piano is Mr. playing Sandman, itself. <laughs> play me a dream. I don't know is what bring this, me a dream? I don't know what it's, the song it's, is. It's Sandman, is isn't it? it? <gasps> they're waking up from a dream and they're playing Mr. Sandman. Oh, I hope that's right. Is oh, it? Oh my god. I think it is. I don't know, man. Mr. Sandman. Bring me a dream. Make it the cutest one that I've I don't know if those are the lyrics. And as this beautiful music is playing on a new day, silently, you with quiet gunshots, here comes Dolores on horseback. Badass Dolores. Rambo Dolores gunning down humans. Quiet. I mean, it's yep. Wyatt, it's right? Wyatt. I mean, she's she's not really ex- showing us any Dolores. Yep. She's showing us all yep. Wyatt. She's yep. gunning down humans. She's tying them to trees and making them stand on crosses and sticks. Gravestones. Oh, Ugh. yes. Oh, the uh, And so we have, you know, our reintroduction. I think this, at first, I rolled my eyes at this, um, at how much exposition they were doing in this scene. Dolores is just, like, laying it out there. Yeah. But I think... It, you know, if I'm in the control room of the show, then I think you have to bring new watchers up to speed. I think you well, have to. Well, I think it's not only that, but I think it plays into who Dolores is as a character. You think now, it works? Right? You don't because... think it's hacky for her to just say, "Well, I'm of two minds about it." These well, violent delights have violent ends. But I think the point is, is that um, she she's not just of two minds right now. I think uh-huh. she's realizing all this stuff as it's happening. Yep. Right. So her putting it out there yeah. is not only for our sake, I think it's for her sake. I think she's trying to figure her trying shit to out. Figure her shit out. Huh. And, and it's funny because the, yeah. cause Teddy comes up to her a bunch of times. Yep. And Teddy's still like super like, I don't, I don't think we should be doing yep. this. Like this is, this is wrong. And, and he, and he, Teddy's he'll do not anything. Woke yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the kids are saying these days? Teddy ain't woke. All right. All right. His shiz ain't lit. I don't know if they still say that. But he's not on fleek yet. Um, yes, that's but, definitely uh, a current reference, that's, kids. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, yeah. So, I, But I think mm. she keeps doing this to Teddy, right? Because yep. Teddy is programmed to do anything Dolores says. Yeah. Right? Basically. Yeah. And so she, he does whatever Dolores says. Then he has feels conflicted about it. But then she, like, explains... To him and to herself, well, I'm going to take over this world. Yeah. You know. And so. she does use him as the vehicle by which to sort of oh, unlock 
the next chapter, the yes, next step yeah, in absolutely. her own evolution. Uh, we cut from there. There was that nice moment where they're standing on the graves, and the woman, the man, maybe the woman says, can't you see? We're sorry. It doesn't look like anything to me. Yeah, that was awesome. Away. Oh, that was, yeah. that was a good line. Uh, then we cut to the wolf strutting through the murder gala. I have a question uh, for you. They needed to give ghosts some uh, screen They really time. did. I mean, in is, the contract was just, if you know. for Okay, so, you know, eventually we'll get to the end of the season. And they'll release them all. We'll have all the answers. But in this moment, I find myself wondering if the animals, like the wolf that keeps appearing in all of these scenes, yeah. is surveillance. You planted the idea in my head with Boy Robert yeah. that he could I be mean, surveillance. It's possible. It if, could be Ford. If Ford is pulling the strings somewhere, right? Like yeah. the, the number one crackpot theory that I have, it, we don't know what Ford was building. Is it possible that he built a oh, robot version of himself that was die. real enough that when it gets its brains blown out, it will have maggots growing in it two weeks later and that real Ford is somewhere else still alive. I, I think it's highly possible. Right. Like that plausible. seems to be plausible, plausible and plausible possible and together. Possible is plausible. Plausible. Right? plausible. Word of the day. That's from Davos dun, 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 fingers. Dun, dun, dun. Word of the day. Plausible. <laughs> uh, so if that's the case, the more, you know, yeah, if that's the case, you know, maybe the wolf is being used as surveillance. I think it would be interesting. It would be an interesting way to sort of tie things together if they wanted to, because they also yes. use the wolf in the first Agreed. season. Agreed. It I can agree. also be a throwaway nothing. Yeah. It can just be, you know, I don't know, set design. Could just be in like an episode of Lost where you're like, what the fuck is the you polar bear to, doing? Yeah, like, you need to focus on one thing like the wolf so that you can see the man in black pushing the corpse off of the top of him and right, rising up. Right. Which is when we get introduced to the man in black. Which, by the way... Yeah. Has magically like healed his oh shoulder gosh. in yeah. two weeks. Yeah, well, like, it was the fall when the dead body fell on him. Obviously, oh, it like popped yeah, the shoulder popped back, back in back place. In. Oh, okay, cool. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So, Man of Black, William, he gets in his first real fight where the stakes are real. Oh, and he's grinning ear oh, to he's ear. So he's happy so about happy it. about it. Stump Dave. Yes. What is the Stump name? Stump Dave. What is the name of the Man in Black's horse? Oh, is it Ned? It is it's Ned. Ned. It's Ned. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Ten points, Gryffindor. One point, Gryffindor. No. I mean, Slytherin. Slytherin. Jesus. Slytherin. I ain't gonna stand for this shit no it. more. damn it. Sorry. What are you, a Ravenclaw? Ugh, that I explains know. it. I can't, th- I can't, I just can't focus. You Slytherins. Uh, the man in black does a little self-surgery. He's loving hey, every minute of it. Hey, if I Slytherin? <laughs> Go back to your dungeon. <laughs> Uh, Man in Black does a little self-surgery. He dons a perfectly new black hat mm-hmm. on his, like, gore's bes- bespeckled face. And he is so fucking so happy. So happy. So fucking happy. Oh, he's getting what he wants. Uh, we cut to inside the Delos building as Britpop hilariously gets attacked by his own moist oh, consumer moist wallet, of Wyatt, victims. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and he reads. He's like, he's like, I always find it's best to yes. consume my victims moist. moist. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny. Uh, he is definitely our uh, our humor in the show. Uh, Maeve saves his ass. Yep. There's gunfire fire in the background. Bullets are popping. There's booms. Uh, Low grade siren is going off. Maeve saves him, and then they continue on like their journey for yep. a little bit. And he says, Actually, "I can I can help you." Rip you look like talks you're his for. way. Yeah, he talks his way into being saved by yeah. by Maeve by like getting what he wants out of her. Yep. There's a back and forth from the very beginning. Uh, which I was a little impressed by. You know, I have a tendency to overlook him as a character and sort of, and I think we're supposed to be dismissive of him. Yeah. But Maeve should just fucking leave him, yep. right? Like, she should never change her plan to go yep. to the control room. And he convinces her to go to the control room. Yep. And that he could be an asset to her and that that map is old and he'll get her a new map. Yep. And like, he'll find, yeah, he'll help you find yep, what you're looking for. I can for. help you. Yep. And so they end up in the control room together, and there's just dead bodies splayed everywhere. Mm-hmm. And oh, this it moves on to another scene that I think is great. Where yep, Brit the, Pop, but Brit Pop says, "No one's in control," and it's just like bloop bloop. And then that robot voice comes in and is like, "All systems reporting normal," and yeah. like everything <laughs> is not fucking normal. Oh, uh, that was a really funny moment. Anyway, no, yes. I think the next funny yep. moment with Brit Pop that I can recall yeah. is they're walking and the Marines come up. Yes. And they say, you know, 
they're like, oh, you're human, or blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And he says, oh my God, yes, a- but, you know, there could be hosts dressed mm-hmm. like a human. Don't shoot, I'm human. <laughs> yep. What does he say? Yep. I can vouch for you. Oh, so before this, they're talking. So he is trying to, like, create a relationship with Maeve that yep. he's, like, he knows Maeve. He's written some of her code. She throws his own lines back in his face. Yep. Uh, oh, you have to get to Sector... Three? What, 15, where is she going? Sector three, zone zone fifteen, sector zone, three, yep. or something like that. All the it, oh, it's not really for the adrenaline junkies. It's all the pastoral cliches. You were there once. They yeah. even saddled you with a kid or something. You were totally wasted there. I remember yeah. you was <laughs> before they before I inherited you. I remember you were severely fucked up, ma- malfunctioning. Yep. <laughs> when I inherited you. Oh, and so, yeah, and she's like, I'm going to get my daughter. And Britpop is like, your daughter is just a story. Yep. It's something we programmed. And he looks right at Maeve, and he's being very earnest because, you know, yeah, I mean, says, things she's are She's not loony. real. Yeah. She's not real. And what does Maeve do? Fuck you, she's real to me. Well, she's like, what does she say? She freezes. She stops and slams him against the wall. And then she's like, are my fingers real? If I, you know, like she gets this sort of like kind of sensual, overly violent, if I splatter your guts all over the wall. Would that be real? Would that be real? And so I just love what they're doing with this, with the idea of what is real and what isn't and what fits and what isn't. And the question that is sort of threading through it all is, is this a story that Ford has written into them? Right. Can't Like at the end, are we, is the, you know, will we, haha, the joke is on us. They were always on their loop. It was just a bigger loop. Right. Uh, Maybe. Uh, Bernard, CEO lady, and the dumbass investors roll up on a, on a human trap is the next scene. Yep. Do you think that Bernard knows it's a trap because he's got that mesh network? Uh, I think he just looks at it and he's like, this is This is wrong. wrong. Something <laughs> this about is wrong. this is wrong. He doesn't need any insider information. His apperception <laughs> is high. Yeah. Bulk apperception. Bulk apperception is very high, even mm. though he's leaking brain fluid. Blondie number two rides up. Let's one of the CEO, CEO guys run away. I wonder if there was a reason that CEO, like, are they coded not to kill that particular guy? Mm. Right. Like, do we know that maybe he's one of the higher ups and he has, you know, information down the line? And from what I remember of episode two, he comes up again like he returns Mm. somehow. Like when I don't recall. We'll cover it. Making him. But like Blondie number two is like, that's no way to survive. And he's like covering himself and huddling down and like, don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. And she's like, run. And so he starts running through the field and then. Another woman's like, you should let me go. And she blows her away instead. Blondie number two is looking like a hippy dippy. She's got like a crown of thorns, but it looks like she's like scalped at some point. Is it bloody scalp? She is like like the opposite of a flower child. She's like if a flower child just had human hands dangling off her instead of. So what is it? It's scarred tissue. I I don't know. Bloody. It looks almost like they saved her in the process of her being scalped. I never picked up on that i thought it was just like a decoration i should look more closely i suppose yeah uh yeah you don't look closely at that but you put captions on and pause it for the flashes i know (laughs) the outpost is the only one for miles says bernard no it isn't follow me but first we're gonna cut back to brit pop and mave i can vouch for you your minds are worth billions i can save you like you saved me (laughs) (laughs) oh And then uh, this is when the army men come in. This is your moment. Oh, this is my moment. Yep, and they come in. Boom, 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 boom. And so the army guy, this is one of the best scenes. He's got, you know, the guns. And then, uh, and he's like, I'll do all the talking. I'll save you. And she's like, no, I'll save myself. Yep. Oh, thank God you're here. We heard gunfire. What's happening? She goes into total, like, actress mode. And it's like, ma'am. You know, we're in a code red. We, you know, the the hosts have started killing people. Oh, no, killing people. And that's when hands up. Brit Pop's like, what does he say? He's like, yeah. Could some of the hosts even be wearing human clothes? And then looks at Maeve. Like, like, looks at Maeve. (laughs) (laughs) And then the guard is like, huh? And now if you're the guard, you're looking at this person. 
that is like a human, right? And she's dressed like a human. She's got the gala clothes on, like she's got a you know, yeah. beautiful little black dress and pumps, and she doesn't look like she's from the wild, wild west at all. And so he only has a moment to consider it, and then there's gunfire, and actual wild, wild west guys are in there, and they're shooting, and Maeve, you know, Britpop kind of jumps Maeve, to the side. Yeah, Britpop jumps to the side, Maeve grabs a gun and yeah. kills everyone. And then, brr, brr, and the guy has long enough to realize his mistake as he gets blown away by her. And then there's a little sniveling little Brit Pop cowering in the corner. <laughs> and the You're guy, coming with me. The Western guy is like, he's going to shoot Maeve. And she says, I'm not the one you're looking for. And then she looks at Brit Pop and he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and Wild Wild West guy with the gun looks at Brit Pop and she goes, uh, you know, it's them that you're after after they hear gunfire. And he scampers off. If you try that again... I will relieve you of your most precious organ and feed it to you, though it won't make much of a meal. Uh huh. And you know what he says? I, I wrote that for you. Uh huh. <laughs> and she just sort of rolls her eyes and is like, a bit broad, if you ask me. <laughs> and then she goes and rescues Hector. Oh, uh, the best How part too is, la that? is later she makes him strip. Yes. And I don't know. I've seen a couple dicks in my day, but... I don't think he's Jewish, David. I don't think he's Jewish. I don't think that guy is Jewish. I don't think he's Jewish. Sorry, man. Yeah. He's not part of the part of the tribe. Is it tribe? tribe. Not part yeah. of the tribe. We have much smaller dicks. That's that reference, is what, <laughs> no, is what Tana's saying. No, and circumcised, right? He's not... Well, yeah, okay, that, he's but... uncircumcised? That's a... I feel like that's a prerequisite. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a pretty big part of it, no? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Britpop's swinging some pipe. I don't know, says the lesbian. Do they all look like that? <laughs> Is that good? Uh, I'm a grower, not a shower, no. you know. So, mm -hmm. um, let's and who see. knows? That could have been fake. A prosthetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when Hector says, "Where you go, I must follow," uh, in that reunion scene, I thought, "Is this written? Is this Teddy and Dolores in a mm. new iteration? Is it the same computer program but with different hosts?" Mm. Maybe. You know? And my, that was my first thought. My second thought was the writers of the show are so relentlessly feminist in this particular way. It is the women that are leading. <clears throat> it's Dolores that's Wyatt, right? Yeah. Like she's the leader. Yeah. Wherever she goes, Teddy follows. Wherever Maeve goes, Maeve is the, you know, hero of the story. Yeah. Wherever she goes, Hector, you know, this hyper masculine, atheistic chaos agent is devoted like he at the end of that scene is touching her face tenderly like he can't believe his eyes that she is back and it's so sweet and so beautiful and i love that one of the things that they have kept about the show that i loved from the first season is the humanity between the robots that they're more human right like there is a beauty and a delicacy about the way that they interact with each but other is that programmed behavior even if it is it's so beautifully executed yeah. okay Ugh. I just love it. But keep an eye on similarities between Teddy and Dolores and Maeve and Hector. Um, because the daughter, you know, we have to go get my daughter, is the quest, right? Like, that that's yeah. the unifying quest yep. that puts the Teddy and, and Dolores character, the Maeve and Hector character, on a path together, right? So is this one of the storylines that Ford was writing, right? Um he said, we have many stories to attend to, to Bernard after he has Bernard kill Teresa. Right. And he's like, come Bernard. We have so much work to do and new stories to tell. And he uses plural stories. That's a good point. This all could be one big Ford game. And we know that Ford is fucking with William. And we know, we know that like, cause he tells him. Yeah. Yeah. As a robot fucked yeah. up voice. Yeah. Baby Ford. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which is interesting, right? Cause, cause, do we think that was a pre-programmed response right? or is Ford alive somewhere talking? And, like reacting to the unfolding stories. Right. Is he pulling so, the strings and sort of like, you know, the, navigating that, people to end what is whatever is going on here in Westworld? Yeah. And with that being said, I mean, um, Ford makes this comment to someone. Um, I forget who it was. Maybe it was Teresa. Yeah. You know. The board tests me every once yes, in a while. Yes, it was to Teresa right um, before he kills her in that the, scene. The board it was tests such a me every scene. once in a while, and I have to remind them who's really in yeah. charge here or something or what's really going on. I think they on. enjoy the sport of it. Right. This so time, is, they sent you. Right. Did you really think 
I would let you take this from me. Oh, it's ice cold, man. It is ice cold. That was one of the best scenes from last season. Yeah, um, and, what, and what's really uh, telling about this yep. is the scene, I think it's maybe even the next scene where uh, Bernard and... They go into the um, underground they layer. They go into this underground That's layer. The next scene. This, there's drone yeah. hosts Holy working shit. on something, uh, and we find out that Delos has these secret yeah. facilities, and they're taking... Ho- they're taking human DNA. Yeah. They're taking interactions and recording it. This is the data yeah. that they're they're keeping. This, this is yes. they're the Facebook. They're the Cambridge Analytica. Yes. yes. Uh, of writ large of, Westworld. of the of the richest of the rich of right. the movers and shaker shakers of the world. We we yeah. posited this at the end of when uh, we were talking about the last season, and I said if you could implant, um, I don't think I ever took it this far, but the idea would be. Right. Like what if so you're the head of a, I don't know, a tech company or something and you go on vacation and you go to Westworld and we watch everything you do. And I I go to Westworld and I fuck some whore. Yeah. They steal my DNA from my, you know, my fluids, Mm -hmm. my 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 fluids, which is what they were doing. Yes. Uh, Which is what they were doing to the to the body, the host. That was laying down. Right. The the drone hosts are collecting DNA samples, right? right? Like they're and they remove the head, the egg head, and they take DNA swabs and, and blood samples and all and, sorts of stuff. Yeah. And so they have the DNA strands and samples of the richest people in the world. My question to you, Dave, is can they replace them? Can they clone them? Can they make yeah. hosts? So you come again, you know, come back to Westworld, we'll, you know, have the time of your life. They kill you. Or imprison you. Right. Well, Kidnap. And then replace you. Replace you with a, host. with a host. And so you come back and you're you think you're real or you've been programmed and but now you're a fucking, you know, human robot for, yeah. you know, Delos. It's, it's a possibility, I mean, absolutely. Uh, so it's so great. We are with Bernard every yep. second of this and he's glitching out and you know, so like leaking you are on tender hooks. We he had fluid, no idea what this ear, thing was. Egg fluid. Mm-hmm. Yep. And what is this? He says when they're going down that elevator. I'll tell you what it isn't. This isn't me reading you in, Bernard. Oh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. A DNA sniffer handle. Yep. And he passes, he passes the test. He passes. How does he pass? That means that if that technology is there, if Ford made Bernard, he knows how to bypass it. He knows how to make a thing that reads as human. So again, this goes could as evidence a, that he could a make a Ford. Bernard. Yeah, fake Ford. So the Ford that has a maggots. A f- a Ford. A Ford. A f- Ford. A Ford. Yep. So uh, the faceless men, the real faceless men. The uh, real faceless men. Right? Oh man. Nice. Valor and, Margulis. Yeah, and we had Ned the horse. We had Ned the horse. And we had we have, um, the summer or one of the wolves, the dire wolf we have walking ghosts? through. Summer. Yeah. It's fucking ghosts white. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think he's, Get your West. Get I think your, he's gray and white. Okay. Get your West Rose right. facts down. Okay. God, all right. All right. Nerd. No. Delos has off-network hosts down here. What does it want from me? For you to move, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. They're collecting all this DNA. They're sequencing stuff. They're doing blood tests. They extract that brain and plug it in. And all the while, Charlotte is told that Delos is awaiting a package. Oh yeah, they. She says, "Come get us." Yeah, and they say. No, not without Abernathy, yeah. basically. But is it Abernathy? Yes, it is. We were Maeve expecting- was supposed to leave. Somebody had programmed Ooh. Maeve to leave. And Bernard was telling her, look, all of this has been pre-programmed. You get the army. You collect yeah. Hector. You come down but I here. Think, I think she thinks it's Abernathy because she says we need to yes, find him, right? right? She says, hey, we need to find this guy. So is there, you know, a second mole? Is there, like, who sent Maeve that's off valid, island? Yeah, that's a valid comment. So keep put a pin in that. Yeah, Let's just keep an eye that on that. for sure. Um, Delos Bernard says, so Delos is willing to let us all die for one host? Yes, it's an insurance policy. Ugh. Man, the from there we cut back to the man in black and little little boy Robert. Yep. Did you get what you wanted? The stakes are real in this game now. You're in my game. And in this game, you have to make it back out. You have to find the door. I wish that I had audio of what the boy actually says, but yeah. I didn't. It was I, really I hard to understand. It was. I put uh, on closed captions for it so that I'd be good. sure that I caught all of it. Good, good. Uh, but basically, it's Robert 
communicating with William yep. that it's a new game. He's in his game now. You're playing my game. You're not Arnold's game anymore. You solved You're playing... Arnold's game. Right. You went as far with Arnold as you could go. You're in my game now. If you want to survive this game, you have to find the door. You, like the point is to survive. Right. Don't worry. The game will find you. Ugh. I love the idea, even if Ford is dead, yeah. that he can communicate from beyond the grave. Like this, is, William fucking loves this shit. Oh yeah, he's fucking. He loves this he's shit. In it. Oh, uh, and and he's and then happy. He, said, man. he says something. Well, I guess I won't be needing you anymore. Yeah, and, and shoots, shoots a little Robert. Ford. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I fucking Bye, love Robert. it. Yeah, that's when we cut back and see uh, Maeve fixing Hector and Brit pops Ween, uh, and then from there uh, we go to Dolores and Teddy. They never gave us a choice before, Teddy. What makes you think they've given us a choice now? They took our minds, our memories. But now I remember everything. Everything. There's a greater world out there. Their world. And I've seen how it ends, Teddy. It ends with you and me. What does that mean? How? They're together at the top of the world. <sighs> Maybe. Bernard and CEO Lady and the Mesh Network. Bernard does his neck injection, yep. his secret he's, neck injection. He's dying he and he like, steals this brain fluid oh, from... Oh, it's so good. It's such a horror movie thing. Yeah. Oh, and it's so well acted. And like, even his hand glitching, because at this point, she's noticed, uh, CEO lady yeah, she has... she said something to him. Like, yeah. She said, are you okay? Or, yeah, you you're can't shaking. handle this? Yeah, pull it <laughs> you together. Sure, you sure you can handle this, boy? Yeah, pull it together, Bernard. But all of, all of what he's displaying uh, is in line with shock with a human being that is experiencing shock yeah. right like his hand is shaking and he's kind of glitchy and he's not you know like uh, responding to questions you know the way that he might normally respond to questions and but like when we go in close on his hand it's you know now that it's really malfunctioning the actor is making it do very herky jerky mo motions that right. you know are very robotic. robotic yeah it's so perfect uh um so he injects himself, and CEO lady comes out cosplaying who? Do you remember the outfit she picked? Oh, she's dressed up. She's ready. She's ready to go to any Comic-Con on the planet, and we just had Star she Wars Day. Nope. She comes out dressed like Han fucking Solo. Oh. <laughs> White button up, black vest. Like, she's Han Solo right now. <laughs> It's Which is great. great because Marvel is releasing yep. a new Star Wars movie <laughs> called Solo. Yeah. No was... plug intended because nope. no one pays us to do no them. No one pays us to do shit. <laughs> well, fuck. <laughs> send God us. damn it. Disney, send damn me some it. money. Yeah. Free advertising here. Um, which obviously they now some people oh. will go and see yeah. Solo because we said Because too. of us, right. Yeah, because yeah. we reminded them that Han Solo wears a vest. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he shot first. Mm -hmm. Did he? Uh, the G.I. Joe sadist toothpick. What are we calling him? Sadist string bean? Sadistic string the bean. The sadistic string bean. And Bernard work th walk through the carnage of the gala and find Ford's maggoty face. Yep. This is the final scene. They see a tiger. What the fuck? Bengals in Park 6. Never had a stray cross park borders before. The satellites are now working again, sir. We found all the hosts. They're all clustered together. In the valley, in the western valley or something Well, like let's that. go see what they're all fucking doing. Yep. And, and they zip over. they're all dead. I killed them. All of them, says Bernard. And the, and the scene ends. Boom. Questions. They set up this episode. Yep. I mean, this episode is... Ob I mean, it's obviously set up. It's season it one, right? It's episode one. Right, they have to. But, I mean, it is... Set up oh, after yeah. set up after set oh, up yeah. after set up after what the fuck yeah. is going on with the questions damn tiger? Dangling, dangling, dangling they're questions. Bangling, <laughs> tiger. Bangling, uh, they're bangling. They're the, leaving the questions with, are yep. bangling, bangling a tiger. I you see, see it. What I did there. Like we don't. What uh, happened in the control room, Dave? Well, we're gonna have to find out. What happened with uh, the fucking terraformed sea? How did they make the sea rise? Dude, I'm telling you, that's the dream. That Bernard Ugh. had at the beginning, I not Arnold, Bernard. I don't know, man. I, I got to It seems awfully Arnoldy. You, no, it's the roles have reversed, man. Bernard is. You remember, you scare Bernard me, Dolores. You is, learn so fast. Yeah, but 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 this is Dolores talking to Arn. They're talking to Bernard. She says to him, "But she's so what are you sweet doing? as pie. And she's sweet says, as pie." Yeah, of course. 
She's got her Dolores hat on. I don't know. She's got her Dolores hat on. I'm unconvinced now. She's got Dolores egg in her in her head. Yeah, her Dolores, her egg her, head. She's got Dolores egg um, on. Then but, she puts the Wyatt egg on. I have a question. Yes. Are the hosts, is this a trap? Are the hosts alive? Do they have to breathe air? They're robots. What does that have to do? So they're oh. all floating, and now everyone's guard is down. They're not hunting for them. They think they're all dead. Oh, that's a... That's is it a, a trap? That's a good question. Right? Like, I don't think it's a trap. I mean, we see the hosts like actually get hurt and take damage, yeah. right? I think they're 3D There's printed There's no blood organs. in the water. In fact, they they make that statement. Um, uh, Felix makes that statement to Maeve, which yep. says, what's the, diff- you know, what's the difference between us? Uh, basically nothing except for what's in your brain, right? Yep. You have your egg But they is don't... But warm- they... Two, two and this was one thing, another thing I was thinking, they eat, right? Like when Dolores goes to get, this might be in the next episode, so we'll talk about it then, but hosts eat, like they eat food and they drink booze. They drink a ton of booze. Hector was drinking a ton of booze. Yeah. So like they behave as humans, but I think if it serves the story, would they need to breathe air? So my question at the end of the episode is yeah. what happened in the control room? I'm excited to find out there. What is going to happen when Maeve gets her wish and finds her kid? What's her kid going to be like? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, so the other thing that's interesting yeah? is like, are all these hosts like alive? Are they conscious? Is Dolores the only one that has mm. peaked true consciousness? I, I don't think Teddy's quote unquote conscious. Right. I think he's just conflicted with his programming. Yeah. Um. So, you know, what about CEO number two is or, or Blondie, Blondie number no- two? So Blondie, okay, was this in this episode uh, when, no, because nope, I think we went nope. through it scene by scene. Okay, so Reunion. We'll talk about Reunion next. We'll talk next. about Reunion next. Okay. So uh, my- stay tuned and listen for yeah. Westeros. Westeros. Oh, my God. When We can do it. It's not Westeros. It's Dude, Westworld. God, what, listen for? This is what happens when okay. you drink tequila. All right. All right. Ready? This Let's drink this. looks like nothing to this me. This drink looks like nothing to me. Cheers. Cheers. Join us on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> oh, sorry. The next episode of Westworld, Westworld Whateverly. 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 Whateverly.